Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Justice, and today I wanna to share with you a really encouraging story and how we can learn from the careers and journey of other filmmakers. Now, as a lot of you guys know, I created an online Christian film academy to train up the next generation of Christian filmmakers, to create careers, businesses, production companies, whatever it is, and just make a full-time living as a Christian filmmaker. And Emmaus has done that, and then some. So right now, Emmaus' production company is bringing in over six figures a year, and he is still a teenager. <laughs> it's, it's, it's absolutely insane. So what I'd like to do now is have Emmaus share with us how he went from a normal, everyday teenager to now making a full-time living, doing what he loves, and ultimately becoming a part of the Tomorrow's Filmmakers team. So Emmaus, I'm going to let you tell your story, and I'm just okay. going to kind of be here and uh, asking sure. questions and stuff. Okay, well, great. Um, well, hey, my name is Emmaus Vanderbilt. I'm the, I'm the founder of Silver Fox Productions, a videography company located in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, so about five, six years ago, I found that I really enjoyed filmmaking because about seven to eight years ago, my friend Justice here was shooting a promotional video for my mom's organization, Bit of Hope Ranch. He was out there with all his camera gear, sliders. And with me as a kid, I was like, this dude is having such a cool job and he was out there for multiple days, riding on the back of tractors, filming kids running around. And I said, that looks like fun. So let's go fast forward a few years. And then my dad, um, Matt, he started a church plant in Gastonia, North Carolina called Vision Church. And whenever we started, we had maybe like 100 people there. And someone donated an old tape camera. And honestly, we didn't have anyone there to use it. We didn't have any paid staff members besides my dad at that time. And I was like, hey. Why not just give it a try and why not just see what happens? And guys, I have to say, some of my first work was terrible. I mean, it was so bad. One of my first videos, it was a recap of like a volunteer cleaning day at the church. I don't even know why I wanted to make that. It was so boring, but I was excited and I was passionate about it. So at that point, once I finished the video, I said, that was fun. Let me see if I could do that again and maybe even try to make some money out of it. So it was Christmas time, my freshman year of high school, and I asked for a Nikon D5200. The price was about $400, and my family said, sure, basically we'll do about half of it, and then you have to chip in some of your money. And I said, deal, let's do it. And I got the Nikon D5200 with a base kit lens, the 18-55, to something like that. It smoked the old tape camera because it had SD cards, which means if you remember with tapes, you have to let them play back all the way, and it takes hours just to import your video. So at that point, I started learning and doing jobs for maybe $100 to $200, but I did a lot of work for free because I just, I loved it so much and I just wanted to get my name out there. I wasn't even Silver Fox Productions at that time. I was just Emmaus Vanderbilt video or films or I didn't even have a name. I just wanted to make videos and keep learning. So as I kept growing and taking it more serious, I found my friend Justice, who I remember from years ago, and just started talking with him, asking him questions, picking his brains, because he's out here making, making short films, working for big brands, has an online film school, and basically he was one of my mentors during this time and was a huge help in just learning how to be a more professional videographer and how to improve my skills. So I kept on making more films for about the next year with a Nikon camera, and I worked at a camp, and they had a camp videographer who shot on a Lumix GH4. And back then, that was the OG of cameras, besides like reds and like high-end cinema cameras. But the GH4, it was about $1,500, and it just smoked the competition, in my opinion. And that guy, his name was Samuel. He had one, and I said, I want to make films and work like he is doing. So what I did, I saved up all my money, and I spent literally 95% of all the money I had between checking and savings on the GH4. I was like, I'm going all in with this because I love it. And honestly, I believe that God was calling me to be a videographer. So I said, okay, I'm going all in. I put all my chips in the middle of the table and I got a GH4 with a Sigma lens and a Metabone speed booster. And that right there started to take me to the next level. I won't even call it professional because who even knows what, what that level is. Yeah. But I was starting to making higher quality films at that point. I got into wedding videos. I shot my first wedding at 16 years old. And the crazy part about it is I've never even attended a wedding up to that point. That was my first wedding ever being at, and I was the lead videographer. So I did it for $300 for some friends, and I loved it. 
it was only $300, but I said, hey, I'll take it and I'll use that to invest back into my business. So I kept on making more and more films with that. Cheap weddings for three to $500, even one for $800. And as I said, this was crazy. People are paying me to make videos that I love doing. And I was just talking with my friend Justice and other videographers talking about how they get clients for thousands of dollars, recurring clients. And I was like, dude, how do you even do that? So just talking with him and then the other guys, the thing I kept on hearing was invest back into yourself and keep on learning and growing as a videographer. So it was about a year ago, I said, you know what? I'm ready to take it to the next level. And I wanted to get a higher end DSLR, the Canon 1DX Mark II. This right here was really taking a step in faith. That's it right there, that is my baby. So with that camera right there, I did not have the money to buy that up front. It was about $10,000 between the camera, the extremely overpriced $500 memory cards, um, two basic lenses to use with it. And I was like, okay, I want to grow, but I don't have the money. So I took out a faith step, borrowed some money from my grandparents. I got a better camera. Now I just need better clients and higher paying clients to actually pay this loan off. So I put it out there. I was like, hey, I shoot wedding videos. I'm a professional videographer now. I have more professional equipment. And what I found is that people actually took me more serious because I had nicer equipment and I made higher quality videos and films. And now to the point where I'm making $1,000, $2,000, even $3,000, traveling all the way to Alaska, all around the world, creating high quality videos for not just weddings, but also other organizations like Honda, the YMCA, shot for New Spring Church, Elevation Church. And I shoot all the time and I love it now. And just recently, I took my next faith step and purchased this baby right here, the red helium 8K camera. Um, and I don't say this to brag, but I was to the point where I purchased this in cash. I got this about a month ago. It shoots 8K, slow motion 6K. And being honest, I don't know where it's going to take me next. Um, I hope that God continues to keep on growing my business. I took another faith step, but I purchased this camera in hopes of really being able to grow my business and take it to the next level. So I went from shooting on a camcorder and having no idea what I was doing to now shooting on that red 8K camera and running a business that brings in over six figures a year. So that is absolutely amazing. Thank you, man. That you're able to do that. <laughs> and I'm sure that you guys can relate because I can relate. I was not making six figures a year while I was still a teenager at all. So what steps can they take that you have done that led to your success? So now I want to share with you six steps that I've personally taken and applied that I believe has led to the success of running a six figure business. So number one is to trust God. This may sound really stereotypical. This may sound, oh my goodness, that's such a churchy answer. And honestly, it's not real popular. But for me, it was trusting God with my business. I let him literally take the steering wheel and say, God, if you want to go left, I'll go left or right. Go right. If you want me to invest, I'll invest. Or if you want me to wait, I'll wait. So if you can really get to the point where you're saying, okay, God, you can have my business. I'm open-handed about it. I believe then... That is where God can start to bless you with opportunities and ultimately a successful business. So step number one, just trust God with your business. If he wants you to take a faith step and put all your savings in the middle of the table and say, God, I'm trusting you, I'm investing in this. If you can really do that and get to that point, that is where God can really bless you. Also, he may call you just to give away a free video to someone. So number two is to invest in yourself. Just like Justice teaches in the Tomorrow's Filmmakers Academy, you have to invest in yourself for people to take you seriously. And if you're just starting out and you don't have a RED camera or a Canon or a, or a GH5 or anything like that, that's perfectly okay. What Justice and I recommend is the Canon T2i. It goes for about $250 on eBay, or even if you can't afford that, smartphones are so good nowadays. You can just take your phone or a cheap camera and go out there and start filming. So just like me, whenever I was starting out, I had a basic handy cam and I decided to invest in myself from the handy cam to the Nikon, to the Canon, to the Red. I eventually took gradual steps towards investing in myself and I believe that's what really led to the success of getting higher paying clients every step I took. Now, just a disclaimer on this, I want this to inspire you, but if you're just starting out, do not take out a loan for $50,000 and get the RED camera or even the Canon camera. Only get what you can afford at that time. In very rare cases, I would recommend taking out a loan like I did and like other videographers have, but use what you have 
and just keep on getting better. But then whenever you reach your ceiling of potential for that piece of equipment, then invest to the next piece to take it to the next level and then the next level and just keep on growing. So investing is such a huge part of your business and tomorrow's filmmakers is an incredible investment because investments are not only about equipment, but they're about skills. And the team at tomorrow's filmmakers with justice and his other teachers have put together a course with over 400 videos and 70 hours of content that will literally cut your learning curve in half. They teach you what camera to buy, what lens to buy, how to start your film business, how to make money with your film business, how to get higher paying clients, and ultimately how to cut your learning curve in half because time is money. I wish I had this whenever I was starting out because I was using a fly cam, a knockoff glide cam, and I was even using it backwards because I didn't know how to use it. So basically all that being said, investing in yourself is a huge part of your business. It's one of the most important aspects to really growing and scaling your business with investing in your education and also in your equipment. Point number three is practice, practice, practice. You could have the best camera in the world, but if you don't even know how to turn it on or what lens to buy or how to even change your white balance or ISO, it doesn't matter. You need to practice your skills and then keep on improving your craft. I constantly see filmmakers that have nice enough equipment, but are currently not making any films because they believe that they don't have nice enough equipment and that they always need something better. Guys, use what you have now, whether that's a handy cam, whether that's a Sony camera, whether that's your iPhone, whether that's a red camera, use what you have now and keep on improving your craft. There's so many filmmakers who are always just wanting something newer, flashier, fancier to make themselves think that they're being a videographer. But honestly, they're just tricking themselves because you will never grow as a videographer just by buying a new piece of equipment. Many people say that content is king, but I believe that high quality content is king. And for me, I believe that has been a huge part of having me stand out from the crowd by not just wanting to make content, but to make high quality content. And actually that is one of the reasons that Emmaus is on our team now is because I knew that he was growing as a filmmaker and producing things and wanting to get into the film business, but I started to see a lot of the work that he was doing and it was really, really good. Now I have emails every day from people sending me their demo reels and saying, hey, can I work with you on a project or if you need anything, let me know. And all their stuff is kind of mediocre, but I kept seeing Emmaus's stuff and it was just phenomenal. It was absolutely amazing. So whenever I had a project that I was working on and I needed some help or a second shooter, I didn't go to those people that sent me their mediocre demo reels. I remembered the high quality content that Emmaus was producing and I contacted him and asked him to help us out on this project and eventually become part of the Tomorrow's Filmmakers team. So it was his high quality content that stuck out to me, not just content that he throws on Instagram, but all of it was super, super high quality. And going off of what Justice said, a lot of people may be thinking, well, how do I get high quality content that stands out from everyone else? Do I need to buy an expensive red camera? No guys, practice with what you have. Keep on, yes, invest in yourself, but it doesn't matter how much you invest, if you never practice and you don't know how to use what you have, you will not succeed in this industry. Whether you have just an iPhone, go out there and make short films. I've seen people make incredible videos just off their iPhone, and that right there proves it's not the gear, it's the skill behind the gear. Number four is to network. If I could, I would put this one in all caps, because in this industry, networking is super important. Early in my career, I did not have a lot of clients, I did not have a lot of jobs, because I was just starting out, not a lot of people knew about me. So what I did, I emailed every wedding videographer in the Charlotte area on the first couple pages of Google and said, hey, I'm a starting out videographer. If you'd like some help editing, shooting or anything, just let me know. Out of maybe 30 people, only two or three got back to me and only one decided to have a meeting with me in person. So I paid my own way to go there. I paid in gas. I paid for parking. I did not get paid for the meeting. So I went out on a faith step there and with him, he only gave me a few jobs of second shooting and of editing a few projects for him, but I got my foot in the door with him. Apparently, what I didn't know, he is friends with one of the largest and most expensive wedding videographers in the Charlotte area. So a long time went by and I haven't heard anything from him. I just kept on doing my thing. And then I got a wedding inquiry for a wedding at the Duke Mansion. And for those of you who don't know, that is one of the most expensive wedding venues in North Carolina. And the first thing I thought is, how in the world did they find out about me? And it was because Steve was telling his other friend, Brian, about me. 
And he referred me because he was already booked for that date. I would not have gotten that job if I would have never, first of all, emailed him. And second of all, went out there and had lunch with him. And third of all, helped him out and added value to his business first by shooting and editing. And then he referred me and all that comes from networking. In addition to networking, having a mentor is vital in this industry. And Justice was a great mentor to me whenever starting out because he helped me grow as a filmmaker and really just develop my skills. And I believe that I am where I am today because I had a great mentor like Justice who just helped me on this filmmaking journey. And I highly suggest all of you to join Tomorrow's Filmmakers, not just to learn videography and how to run a business, but to have a mentor. You get Justice and this whole teaching team to help mentor you through this walk of becoming a videographer and a professional filmmaker. And it can really take your business to the next level. Number five is to have a strong social media presence. Even if you're a great videographer that has nice equipment and amazing skills, you will not have any clients if they do not know where to find you. I recommend having a strong website and a strong social media presence. Those are two big things that I believe has led to my success as a videographer. For me, I use Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, and I use Squarespace for my website. Inside the full wedding course at Tomorrow's Filmmakers, I'll be discussing and going over my entire process on how I use social media to market and expand my business. But I do have one tip for you that I believe has led to my success to running a six-figure business and using social media, it is to post high quality content consistently. If you make a video every single day, but it's garbage, don't post it just for the sake of having something to post. Only post whenever you have something that is worth posting. If you have a beautiful wedding that's twice a month, maybe you post four times a month. Maybe you post twice for each wedding. Or maybe you do an engagement session shoot. Maybe you make a short film. Post a trailer only if it's some of your best work. I have a lot of clients who come and hire me just based off of seeing my Instagram feed. So make sure it is your best work that you're putting out there and clients will hire you and they will start to contact you if you post consistently and you have high quality content. Finalmente, el número seis es nunca deje de aprender. And what I just said is finally for number six is to never stop learning. As you can see, I am not a native Spanish speaker. And years ago, I believe God put it on my heart to try something new and step out and learn Spanish. Because honestly, I felt like I was a good enough videographer back then, but I wanted to try something new that first of all, I didn't know. And second of all, that I was not good at. Yes, for the purpose of knowing Spanish, but also to keep my mind sharp. Maybe you feel like you've mastered videography and you say, okay, Now I want to go on to learn lighting. Now I want to learn how to be a stuntman. Now I want to learn how to shoot weddings. And that's what I love about Tomorrow's Filmmakers is Justice and his team has such a wide variety of topics, all the way from how to shoot weddings, all the way to how to jump off buildings and fight people with fake guns. It's everything that you would want to know about filmmaking. So guys, never stop learning, whether that's in video and lighting, learning a second language, learning how to play an instrument. Keep your mind sharp and always be willing to learn something new especially if you are not good at it. So that is an absolutely amazing story and it's really encouraging. So where can everybody find you at on your social media? Yeah, you guys can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. And if you personally have any questions for me, I respond to all emails. You can send me an email at hello at silverfoxproductions.org. Feel free to email me in English or Spanish, whichever is easiest for you. And I look forward to helping you guys in your filmmaking journey and teaching you guys through this wedding course and the other teammates at Tomorrow's Filmmakers. Yeah, and if you want to learn more, you can check out tomorrowsfilmmakers.com. It's an online Christian film academy. We have over 400 video lessons, over 70 hours of content on every topic you can think of, from acting, stunts, storyboarding, directing, running your film business, whatever you need, we want to be the place that you can learn. You can also check out our free one-hour filmmaking webinar where I share with you how to get into filmmaking as a Christian filmmaker, my 10 secrets to improve your filmmaking, and also my secrets to starting and running your film business. This hour is completely jam-packed with information, and you do not want to miss it. So I hope that you guys have really enjoyed this episode and you got some encouragement from Emmaus' story. So keep filming and God bless.